So um, Gowanus is one of the more unique uh, urban industrial districts in our country, and that's why today our next project at Frog is to bring this to the National Registry of Historic Places and have it listed as an urban industrial site. Now, there are a lot of industrial buildings on the National Registry, but what we're looking to achieve here with Gowanus is to have it listed as the first urban industrial district on the National Registry. The Army Corps of Engineers first found it eligible for the National Registry back in 2004, and our community group has taken on doing the work of hiring uh, an architectural historian, Gregory Dietrich, to do the necessary assessment of the canal and all of its buildings. Um, now, Linda Mariano is actually spearheaded the engine behind all of this. She has been working with the State Parks and Historic Preservation Office and seeking help and advice from the Historic Districts Council on the process. Now, uh, Linda and many in our, in our community have um, collected small-scale donations, even sold paintings and jewelry to help cover the expense of this project. And those of us who live and work in the Gowanus uh, community are not doing this just to mark history for history's sake, but we really believe this environment, this historic environment, has a lot to teach us today. Uh, now, I've done a lot of walking tours along the Gowanus Canal. I've even, even done a few for the U.S. State Department Special Visitors Program. And I like to end my walking tours down at the Lowe's uh, Turning Basin that's just south of the 9th Street Basin. There you have Lowe's on one side of you where you can go in and buy fancy new refrigerators and dishwashers. And then you can come out to the canal and look across the way as cranes drop refrigerators and dishwashers on a scrap metal heap that's loaded onto a barge and eventually shipped back to China. I understand that scrap metal is actually our biggest export to China today, helping keep our trade imbalance in check. But um, standing there, you really do get a sense of, uh, of the dilemmas that we are faced with both economic and um, environmentally, you also get a real sense of our cultural relationship to the goods that are produced on the global market. Is there another way? Let's just look back at our history. The Guanus was authorized for construction back in 1849, and that was when Brooklyn was being transformed from farmland into a city. So the street grid that was being imposed here was actually um, designated as a very human scale. At that time, if you wanted to move goods or get about, you either walked, you used a horse or carriage, or you used a boat. So that really set a human scale to the urban street grid here. Both New York and uh, Brooklyn are actually very 19th century cities and will forever be because of the scale of our urban street grids. So it was here where the Gowanus was channeled through the marshland um, to bring boats in and where eventually you could upload goods, construction materials, and even fabricate goods that, that, that would be brought up for construction of the city. Now what's kind of amazing about the industrial district here is the actual level of, of production that took place here. That during this time period, Brooklyn has constructed the highest level, the most, um, the, the most amount of high quality working and middle class housing that has ever been produced in any city. And that was done because of this urban industrial district. So uh, I live in um, a, 19, uh, a federal style row house that was built in 1862. And when you walk into the parlor in my house, you encounter the standard marble fireplaces we all see all over Brooklyn. Now that marble had to be fabricated and hauled here without the use of a trucking industry or um, you know, any power tools to do, do the fabrication. So all of that, including the floor joists, the wood um, for, the, for the, the buildings, plus all the bricks, had to be hauled here by hand. And I think that's kind of testimony to the level that this industrial district um, was, was able to function at. That this was not one big global industry at work here. This was a lot of small uh, local industries actually working to meet the needs of the marketplace. Now, let's look a little, at a little bit of the buildings around here. Across the way, we have the green building. Now, that site once served as a uh, lumber yard and a coal yard. The building there uh, served a die cast company. It was an ice house. And I knew it first as a building that had, um, they built bars for the, the restaurant industry. It was proposed to be built, torn down about 10 years ago to put up a condominium building. It was designed by the architect who's done many of the buildings we see on 4th Avenue. Frog uh, organized to oppose that uh, zoning variance on that project. So the building still stands today, and we find it's become a very integral part to what's happening here in Gowanus. 
Um, this fall, it actually served as a unique backdrop for the fashion industry where Nigel Barker was hosting an event. Across the way, we have the box building. This building, again, was built to serve as a, a box manufacturing company that made use of the canal. Today, we have a variety of industrial art complexes going on in that building, including Proteus Gowanus with an art studio. The level of construction that was going on here in the Gowanus Industries really earned the landmark status for all of our Brooklyn communities around here because of the, the, the quality of the detail. And a lot of those little details do start to show up in the buildings that we have here. So if you look um, at the Ephemeral Arts Building on 3rd Avenue, you'll see some of that. Down at the very end of Bond Street, we have um, a building that was built simply for, as an ice house with beautiful arched brickwork. That building was later incorporated into a larger complex as a brewing pro um, complex. If you go to 3rd and 3rd, we have the uh, American Can Factory building. Now you go into the, the entry floor of that, that space and you'll find this incredible radial beam ceiling. And there's, but there's no structural reason to build a radial beam, beam ceiling, especially in a square foot building like that, uh, other than for the sheer delight. And you can go in there and, express, and, and share some of the delight of those builders just you know, witnessing that, that item that's still there. And directly across the street from there, we have the Cognette building, which uh, we are all very uh, aware of in, in the news today. It was originally built uh, not as a house, but as an office. And it's designed that the way that it is to kind of showcase the uh, company's materials. It was a stone yard, and the property around was a place where they ha housed stone. The, they came up with a, a unique precast material that was actually used to um, in the construction of St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan. Okay, so also if you go further up at the head of the canal, we have the ASPCA headquarters. There, uh, you ha find this nice Romanesque uh, revival style building. They have lovely tiles set in the top of the building. But what's also very charming about this building is set in the, the, a plaque is this a plaque of a guardian angel looking over at the welfare for the workhorses. This was the headquarters of the um, ASPCA, and they were really founded to look out for the welfare of the workhorses, which were really integral to the early part of the um, Gowanus industry. Around Gowanus, we also had a lot of stables. The stables where horses lived. There's, this w is one that had been on Bond Street, and they had huge granite pillars out front. They were like 18 by 18 solid um, granite pillars that helped for structure and to, for fire protec protection. What's interesting about this building is they actually had inside a people-powered elevator where they would hoist the horses up to the stalls in the upper level. This building was recently torn down for condominium development, but uh, the neighbor next door did save those stone pillars that are left on Bond Street that are there for a street furniture. Um, so a few years ago, uh, several frog members of Christy McGuller and Margaret Mogenet had curated a, a pro um, exhibit that was, took place at the Brooklyn Historic Society. And there they featured a lot of the current industries that are going on within Gowanus. And what we learned from that exhibit, investigating all of these industries, that these places in Gowanus, the, the scale of our industrial city, actually serves these businesses to allow them to do um, specialty construction um, businesses. This, the proximity of this area also to the local markets really is of value to these, these uh, businesses. So as today, as we're really struggling with our current economic situation and environmental issues, people in Gowanus are really exploring different ways to meet our needs. Uh, and I think the, the legacy that the history has left us here is actually working for us. So I invite all of you to kind of walk this pedestrian um, landscape and explore some of the details to see if what history has left for us. And if you want to find out more about uh, the progress of the National Registry, uh, you should check in with local frog members. Thank you. Thank you.